So today is not really a traditional watch review, it's more of a watch alternative kind of video. Now, I recently acquired this watch, which is the Tudor Pelagos. It's what I'm wearing today, it's what I've been enjoying for a while, when I've lasted over for a while, I don't know if it's less blown out over here. Um, but I recently got another watch in from Visitor, and it's their new Linden model, and I think that it's pretty interesting how many similarities slash uh, just kind of elements that I think is shared and somewhat can be seen as an affordable alternative to the Pelagos. So let's get into the video, look at these two watches a little more in depth, and hope you enjoy. So here I have somewhat of a unlikely pairing, but I think just looking at the two watches you can kind of make s sense of why they're pinned up against each other. On the right we have the Linden by Visitor and the Pelagos by Tudor on the left. So when I ordered the Visitor watch, when it came in I was surprised about how much it reminded me of the Pelagos, as well as really how much I found myself thinking, why do I have the Pelagos? I could just have this, which is dangerous. So needless to say, I'm setting this back again in a different color, but that's not the reason I'm doing this video today. The reason I'm doing this video is because I think this Linden is kind of a really good alternative to the Tudor Pelagos, or a nice kind of well-done homage, as in it's not completely copying the Pelagos, but it's taking some inspiration, making it its own, as well as bringing to fruition its full design language under its own brand, rather than just trying to be a, I guess, dressier version of a Pelagos. So right off the bat, we got two blue watches. We got white for all the indexes, for all the minute markers, the hour markers, the hands, uh, Pelago slide has slightly wider hands, but that's not the point. The difference really becomes this is more of a dressy casual watch, while this is very much a tool watch. Now, let me get my calipers here so I get the correct measurements. We have the visitor here at 39 millimeters by 48 and a half, and it is about 10 and a half thick. We have the Tudor here at 42 millimeters with a 50 millimeter lug width and 14 and a half ish millimeter thickness. This has a 20 millimeter lug width, this has a 22 millimeter lug width. So as you can see, the visitor is in a lot of ways more refined, a little more uh, wearable especially for smaller wrists, and overall, again, dressier leaning. So the blues are, I would say, very different. The Tudor is, while it is a deep and very nice blue, it is very much matte. The color never changes. It does change as in the saturation kind of looks different under different lightings, but the blue of the visitor is really this inky, blue that really just soaks in the light so well and looks so dark in certain settings and when it's under very bright light it becomes a little lighter it's just more leaning towards a navy color while I guess as the Pelagos was trying to go for more of the a nice Greek sea color on this one so obviously there is some design differences other than the fact that this is a tool watch, this is a dress watch. We see in the Tudor there is more dimensionality to the watch itself. We have raised markers that set into side, uh, another raised uh, minute track and a slash chaptering. While the visitor we do also have raised markers uh, to a lesser extent I believe as well as a, if you can kind of tell, sunken in seconds track 
into the dial. So, and I think the crosshairs is also slightly sunken in. Yeah, it is. So although the visitor doesn't have as much dimensionality as the tutor does, or it definitely does have a little 3D effect to it because there is layers to the dial. It just is accomplished a little more to a greater extent on the Pelagos. Overall, I think another major difference is you can see the Pelagos, very much utilitarian made, not fancy. It has this tiny little, I don't even know if that's polished or if that's just kind of, you know, slightly differently brushed titanium, but you know, not a lot of finishing going on. Thick, beefy case, thick, beefy bracelet, thick, beefy, relatively slim, but thick, beefy uh, clasp. Well, with the visitor, we have polished bezel, polished chamfer, brushed side, polished back, see-through case back, while the tutor is, of course, closed. And one thing I do want to mention is for a, this retails for about $600. For a $600 watch, the striping on this movement is very deep and really dynamic compared to just a plain, you know, regular yeah, seagull type looking um, finishing. So I really enjoy that. The custom rotor is a nice touch. I don't particularly like how there's unfinished parts all throughout here on the outer edges of the movement. I think it could have been executed a little better there, but you know, it's not the most expensive watch in the world, so you can't expect the world. The hands on the visitor are snowflake resemblant, I would say. It really comes to life in that uh, ass minute hand there. Very similar to the hour hand on the Pelagos. Kind of inspirationally the same. But I think the visitor is actually a little more cohesive almost in its handset. Uh, the visitor handset is actually inspired by calligraphy pens. Uh, so uh, these fountain pens. So you can kind of see with this hour hand here, it even has that little... I forget what it's called, but the tip of the pen that allows the ink to flow. And I think that's just a really nice touch. It has the, it actually has a real world application and interesting just design element that was brought to life. But I think like the circular fountain pen like hour hand along with this snowflakey pointy uh, minute hand is a little more cohesive than the snowflake and just regular pointed sword type uh, minute hand on the Pelagos. Not to say the handset is bad on it, it's very much a legibility thing where the hour hand is very much differentiated from the minute hand, so you can definitely tell which is which. But I think as a design as a whole, the hour handset on the visitor is a little more cohesive. So showing them on the wrist, here we have the Pelagos on my 6.5 inch wrist, and if I guess I just Fidel Castro my watches here. Put these both on. The interesting thing about these watches, which I think really comes to life when I have it on the wrist here, is the visitor actually has a larger dial diameter while having a smaller case. So as we see, the dial diameter of the Tudor is about 31.7, while the dial diameter of the Visitor, if it can catch correctly, is actually closer to 33.5. So it's actually about almost two millimeters bigger in diameter on the Visitor while being in a slimmer, smaller case profile. So I think that's just interesting. It's a little more expansive. Uh, Maybe it looks almost less cluttered, especially because all the text that's on the Pelagos. Another thing I really like about the visitor is it just says visitor on it. There's no automatic, there's no water resistance rating, there's no chronometer certification rating, there's no logo. It's just visitor. It's uncluttered, it's simple, it's clean, it's minimalistic, and I dig that. I think, you know, obviously the tutor gets the upper edge in the fact that it's made out of titanium. It's 500 meters water resistance. It has a screw down crown. This is 50 meters water resistance. It doesn't have a screw down crown. 
has an in-house 70 hour power reserve on the Tudor. You have a Miyota movement, which I believe has around a 40 hour power reserve on the visitor. Uh, I believe they both have 28,800 hour beats per hour sweeps. So not much of a difference there. But I think for all their differences and all their similarities, these watches are kind of comparable and if you don't want to spring for the Tudor, I think the Visitor is a really, really good alternative. Yes, it's a different watch. It serves a different purpose. It's not a dive watch. But you get the same feel of the Tudor. You get the same kind of aesthetic. You get the same almost wearability. I mean, this is 48.5 lug to lug while this is 50 lug to lug. So it even almost wears the same. Um, honestly, I don't know where else I'm going with this video, but... I dig both of these watches. I think the Visitor is really cool. The Tudor is really cool. Uh, I can see a place for both blue watches in one collection, but for me, they're just very similar. And I just, I love the Pelagos, so we're gonna get a different color in this Linden. So, I hope you got something out of that video. Uh, I thought it was an interesting comparison just because when I took this out of the box, I was like, wow, that is a lot like the Plagos. So thanks for watching. Uh, thank you if you got this far in the video with all my rambling. So one thing I did end up forgetting to talk about is how similar the loom is on these watches, or at least how good the visitor loom is and how it kind of stacks up to the Plagos loom. Now, at this point, I've already sent back the blue Linden and I have this white model so I can also show you really quick just I think the difference that exists between them now as you can see I think the pure white dial really does take away a lot of the almost similarity or overlappingness that the blue dial had with this Tudor watch I feel like now they are two separate things even though they do have the similarities in the handsets so just let you look at those for a second and then I'm gonna loom them up. So here we go, the loom on both watches. Now, I think the loom is done very well on both watches. I think just from my eyeball vision, I can tell that the Tudor is a little bit brighter and probably has a little bit of thicker application. I think it's pretty cool that the Tudor has a loomed bezel. So it's just very, very legible. I think the Visitor is pretty cool because it has a loom, completely loomed outer track as well as a loomed date window and a loomed uh, logo actually. It's starting to die down a little bit or at least my camera cannot pick it up as well. So let me re-loom it and yeah as you can plainly see there it has the Visitor logo in loom as well as the date window. And I don't see many watches that have a loomed date window and I think it would have been really cool if the Tudor would have had that. but. You know, you can't ask for everything, and I think uh, because they're using a white date wheel, I don't think they can make the black uh, numerals into loom. So, you know, a little trade-off, but again, something that I think is pretty similar again in the watches. But yeah, overall, good loom on both of them. I would say the Pelagos probably keeps the loom a little better, but you're not going to complain with the visitor. And... It also is a cheaper watch, so the loom can be forgiven. And again, thank you for listening to my rambling, and hope to see you in another video. Bye.